Loops are one of the most powerful techniques in animation. Using a small number of frames, you can add more engagement to your animations by using well-placed loops. I use them all the time in my animation, and sometimes I find little ways to hide them so they're not as noticeable, because just watching a loop of the same boring punch over and over can get tiring. So there are some ways that you can add some variation to them and keep them interesting instead of just boring and repetitive. But before we get into all that, I'm going to teach you guys the basics of animation loops and show you how to apply them in a simpler, repetitive action before we get into all the complicated stuff. So in the simplest of terms, all a loop needs to be functional is for the first frame and the last frame to either be the same or for the last frame to lead into the first frame. Here are some examples of both. A super simple way to make loops easy is just to animate your action that you want to loop and then place a blank frame and then take the first frame of your loop and paste it right behind that one. Then you can put on the onion skin and in between your last frame. Then you delete the first one and your last frame should perfectly lead into that first frame. I like to number my frames as I go because I most times will put loops in the middle of other animations. Like in my most recent Muay Thai vs Jiu Jitsu animation, I actually used a couple loops for the elbows and for the punches. And it was really cool because I was able to make them quick and repetitive, but it added a lot to that fight. And now that you have the basic concept of how loops work and how to create them, I'm going to walk you through the process of creating a super simple loop uh, just to show like an exercise. I'll be using Clip Studio Paint for this. I'm actually, while recording this video, was in the process of learning Clip Studio in seven days. So trying to master the animation features in seven days time. That video should be coming out in uh, two or three weeks or so. I have to edit it and everything. So subscribe for that, because it's going to be cool. But program aside, first step is to rough out your actual movement. You can use reference if you have to, or if you have it directly in your head, just animate from that. I'm going to be animating my Muay Thai fighter character, curling 800 pounds. Something light for him. I'll start by roughing out his start pose, which is with the weight down as he's about to lift it. And once I get this perfect, I can really start making this animation come together. This action is so simple, it's the perfect thing to loop because he's literally just lifting the weight with his arm and it goes right back down. The whole rest of him can basically be a still image. So I'll animate his arm lifting the weight up and I'll number the frames as I go. You might not consider this necessary since you can see frame numbers on the bottom, but no matter what program or app I'm animating in, I always like to number my frames uh, myself and add little notes to myself and things like that which make them easier to reference back to and replicate in my animation process. So this is a six frame loop so this action takes place over six frames well actually seven but six individual drawings I should say since I take frame number three and I use it twice. I wanted to add a little overshoot to where he lifts the weight so it pops up and settles back in. So I just took frame three and used it for when he lifts the weight, right when he reaches his peak. Then I have drawing number four or frame number four come in right after that to show the weight pop up a little bit. And then when it goes back down, I use frame three again. So even though it's only six individual drawings, I did use frame three twice. I also put frame one at the end since it's going to take him a minute before he lifts the weight back up again so there's going to be a pause there and since he's going to rest in that down position i just duplicated frame one since that was already the down position with simple repetitive actions like this sometimes it's really convenient to reuse certain frames or drawings over again where applicable like in this pull-up animation that i did uh on his descent it's basically the same position as, as he rises up, so I just used that same drawing again. This doesn't always work, but on very repetitive and simple actions like this, it's very much applicable. 
And with the rough animation done, I'm just gonna go ahead and clean it up and add the color and the shading and everything like that. Um, the arm is basically the only thing that's moving, so I take the body and duplicate it across every frame uh, where it fits and the bench that he's lifting on um, because those are static, um, but some loops won't have static elements like this. This one just happens to. And then I export the animation and the result is two seconds long, but by duplicating this two second sequence, I can make him lift the weight up as many times as I want. That's another great thing about loops is that once you animate it once, uh, during the editing process later on, or while you're still animating, you can duplicate that loop as many times as you want to replicate an action. Like, if I look at this old animation I did here of Romulus uh, shooting his pistol, the original animation I did was only four seconds long, and he fired his gun three times before reloading. But the first two shots were loops of the same animation. So, in post, I just cut off the animation at that start frame, and then duplicated it uh, several times to make him shoot more rounds. And as a result, I'm able to make him shoot eight times as opposed to just three before he reloads, since the first shot was a loop. And that is the basics of looping animations and how to execute them. You basically just need that first and last frame to line up, and otherwise, all the way in between that, you can do whatever you want, get as creative as you want, as long as you can get that character back to his starting position in a fairly natural way. Um, there's another thing I thought of doing called a loop chain, where you create a series of loops that all fall back to the same starting position, so that you could interchange them and use them however you want and make it super complex. I've only done a couple of little tests with this that I'll probably put up on the screen, but the next time I talk about loops on this channel, it'll be the loop chain, which will be a way more scaled up version of the classic loop. So look forward to that, subscribe for that. If you want to see how I entered and then placed in an animation contest, click these two videos here.